So we're going to talk about promises today. <laughs> um, so yeah, first of all, let's talk about the why behind a promise. Who has an idea of like, well, I guess we're talking about asynchronous code in general. What is the purpose of asynchronous code? Why not just run code synchronously? Does anybody have an idea? Well, because like when we're making a fetch call, we're like waiting on the result of that call before we do something else. So we can't really like keep going with the code until we get that response back. So my question is, why wait for it? What, like, uh, I guess what I'm saying is, actually, let's let's slow down for a second and talk for a second about what asynchronous code is. Okay, so to show y'all what asynchronous code is, we're gonna make a little project here. So I'm just gonna open up my terminal. I'm gonna cd and throw away, and we're gonna make a directory called fetch fuck around. Cool. So I'm gonna go ahead, open that up. Cool, bam. And just like always, we're just gonna make a simple little uh, shitty HTML app. So I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna create, if it ever decides to load, index.html, and we're gonna do an app.js. If that's a little too small, I can make it a little bigger here. Cool. So now I've got my HTML. I'm just gonna go ahead and hit it with that. Bam. We're gonna make sure we bring in our script. Script, oh, actually, I'm gonna do a, I'm an abbreviation, script source equals app.js. And then we're also going to do, we can do a defer, doesn't really matter. I don't know if we're going to need it later. For now, let's assume that we will need it. I'm going to go into the app.js. And I just want to do, we're going to do a fetch call to the Rick and Morty API and not really do anything with that fetch call. But we'll do one. So we're going to fetch um, uh, the Rick and Morty API. Whoops. And cool. In fact, I want to do this, okay? I want to say console.log step one. And then I want to do inside of this fetch call, we'll do some stuff that we normally do. So we'll do a dot then response goes to response.json. I know this all seems very familiar. And then instead of doing anything with these characters, which by the way, I have to delete that. Um, instead of doing anything with these characters, what I wanna do is in my callback function, I'm actually just going to console.log does this happen first? And then after this, console.log, or does this happen first? Cool. When I open up my browser, I should see three things console logged, okay? Which, what order is it gonna be? What is the order gonna be in which things are console logged? In fact, I'll just call this one for simplicity, so that way it's easier to think about. I'll call this one A, and this one we'll just call uh, B for right now. Which one do we expect to be console logs first, Kat? B. Why? Because it's not waiting on anything, and A is waiting for the response from the fetch call. Okay, so if this, so what you're saying is this line of code runs, this line of code starts, but doesn't necessarily finish, then this line of code runs completely. So that means the words that we can use to describe this is this line is synchronous. All, everything inside of here is asynchronous. Everything 
from line three to seven is asynchronous. And this is synchronous. Does everybody understand that concept? Fist to five. Five. Cool. So that's the number one thing that we had to discuss is what does asynchronous even mean? That is what asynchronous means. It means that it's not running line by line, technically. It runs line, 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 but whenever this thing comes back is when these things execute. This is the concept of asynchronous code. Let's prove that Cat was right by going ahead and running a light server. Bam. Oh, right. I'm like, nothing's loading. What the fuck? But it did work. Oh, it's really? Oh, no, that's just a favorite con. Don't worry about that. So as predicted, step one, and then B went first, and then A went. This is just the whole purpose of asynchronous code. Cool. The next thing that we want to talk with about is what, why? So why does that exist? That exists because... Well, we don't want to completely stop our entire computer just to wait for this to happen, right? There could be a hundred things after this that are all valuable and make the user experience better that if I wait for this to happen before I run it, I'm just wasting a bunch of time. Cool. So it seems like everybody kind of understands the concept of why with asynchronous code. Let's just talk about the two common ways of handling it. There's this way, which is the way that we know um, right now. Ooh. <coughs> um, what do we call this? Bless you. Thank you. Does anybody know like what school of thought this is um, as far as there's two major ways in JavaScript that we handle asynchronous code? This is one of those two major ones. Do you, does anybody know what that keyword would be on promise promise exactly so this fetch call fetch is a function that returns a promise promises in general are venable venable meaning that you can chain dot thens on them cool dot then um before we get too deep into how those work let's first take a look at the alternative just so y'all know what you're seeing if you ever do encounter it i don't think we're going to go too deep into how to use it today unless y'all really want to um but the other option is asynchronous functions in javascript so they work a little bit differently oh it's called async await is the the word async await so yeah, they call it, they do call it async functions. Never mind, I was right the first time. But usually when I talk to people that reference it, they do call it async await. Um, that's just what they use. So now instead of using, they're still using promises, but instead of using dot vens, what they're doing is they're creating an asynchronous function by using this async keyword. And then they're using this await keyword and the way that I think about how it works is that this variable is not defined until this promise comes back. And then you can just console.log the result. It's a different way of doing the same thing. If we want, we could try doing one um, with async await. Maybe we can just console log, you know, all the characters or something like that. So we could try this out function. I guess we'll do that afterwards. I think we should go deeper into how these dot thens work, um, actually. So who wants to give their best explanation on how these dot thens are working? Jack, you're unmuted. You asked for it. You asked for the call out. Fine. 
Um, okay, so that then is going to implicitly take the result of the previous um, line in this instance. Uh, yep. And that's being, you're chaining it off of it. Yep. So basically, whatever um, whatever is the result of the fetch or what is whatever is the result of the previous dot then is going to be implicitly passed into um, the next dot then. Exactly. Uh, Oh man, I was going to keep going. That what else do you want to say? I was, oh, I was, keeping, I was it's giving you words of affirmation mid sentence. My bad. Oh, okay, no, no, you're fine. Uh, so from that point, you can either use it like it's a callback function and uh, uh, just in implicitly call something, um, or you can further elaborate it. Uh, uh, but at any point, um, you can break. You can just break it out as well. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't know what happens uh, uh, whenever your dot then chain is over. It seems like that code just seems to disappear unless you persist it somehow, um, whether it's through a, a variable assignment or um, uh, uh, I guess that would be the only way to do it. Um, yeah. But, so there's some trip. There's some trippy stuff with this. For one, a dot then something that's worth noting is a dot then returns also returns a promise. So because a fetch returns a promise, you can call a dot then on it. Because a dot then returns a promise, you can call a dot then on that. But in general, you can always call a dot then on a promise, right? And whatever that promise evaluates to is what goes inside of this callback function. So whatever this returns, so let's walk through this workflow. And this is kind of confusing until you do it a shit ton of times. But the way that I think about it is a fetch returns a promise that resolves to whatever that fetch call resolves to. A dot then, in this case, returns a promise that resolves to response.json. And actually, believe it or not, response.json also returns a promise. So since this returns a promise, we can call a dot then on that. Um, pretty sweet. That's, that's kind of like the basic concept here. Um, and in general, you can take a promise and you can run it in a callback function. And that callback function, this is where you do the resolved value for previous promise. That's what I would call the input argument to any dot then. Does that make sense? Does that help clear that up a little bit? This shit's weird. This shit is very weird, just so y'all know. So if this seems weird, it's very fucking weird. At least I think it is. Cool. All right, sweet. So, all right, so what do y'all know about dot .catch? Have you seen dot .catch before? That's for errors, right? Yeah, dot catches for errors. So a dot catch will only get triggered if an error message is thrown. Let's give it a shot. So we have a dot then, we have a response here. Let's fuck with this for a second. Okay, so let's make the, um, for now what we're going to do is we're just going to console.log, whatever that is. And then what I want to do is I want to in between this, do a dot then, and in this dot then, we're gonna just run some callback function that throws an error. So we're just gonna type in throw new error is actually a JavaScript data type, and we're gonna instantiate it with, uh, what isn't it like? I don't know, we'll figure that out. Uh, you fucked up. So what did I mess up here? What doesn't it like about that? Expected. Oh, I think it just wants this before the throw. Cool. 
So now what I can do, first of all, let's see what this does. Okay. I have, cool. It automatically tells me this, it's uncaught in a promise. What I can do is I can catch that error with a dot catch. So if I catch that error, then now the thing that gets plugged into this callback function is the error. And also I need to get rid of that. The thing that gets put in there and I can also just like console.log that error. You can actually just console log the message of the error and not actually get this thing to throw an error. So now nothing threw an error, but it renders a message to the screen. So that means that instead of this thing, this thing threw an error and then it got sent over to the dot catch and the dot catch handled that error. Kind of cool, right? Ask me some questions. I don't know exactly how to explain everything that just happened unless you ask me some questions. Come on, Sam. So I have Let's go for it. I'm s i am didn't mean to only let Sam ask questions. That's my bad. So will the like catching of the error prevent like your code from like breaking? You know how like will it like still let the rest of it like the code render is that the it, point it can yes so you can use an error catch to do like oh okay this server fucked up maybe i want to render here here's a good thing you could do you can also throw it into a doom spiral if you don't like tell it specifically what to do given the error yep so it's like so, sorry so for example, right here, it says, oh, you fucked up. Bam, it alerts me that. So what it allows me to do is actually do something with the error that comes up. So for example, maybe a user tries to hit a database with a password that was their previous password. And if you think about it, the front end wouldn't know what the previous password is. That's a back end thing, right? You don't wanna store that shit on the front end. So that means that the back end knows what that uh, is so the back end could be like, oh, yep, you uh, accidentally sent the same, you accidentally, uh, you accidentally sent the same password as last time. That's kind of fucked up. Then maybe what you can do is you can make a little box pop up that tells the user, hey, you fucked up. And this is exactly how you fucked up. So rather than just throwing an error in here, you create a feature for the user based off of what that error is. Right? Does that make sense? Cool. Right, ask me some more questions. Maybe like some questions on how this is working. Cause like, hmm. I, uh, so I, I don't wanna put you on the spot again, but what's the like official, uh, what is the, value that's being passed into the dot then like what's the correct language for describing that so a dot then so a dot then other right. than like yep keep going you go a dot then everything inside of here is a callback function i don't know it might be called like a promise handler actually there we go. Okay. Yeah. That's the kind of word that I was looking for. Cause I'm thinking like, so the dot then I don't want to say then the dot then evaluates what the previous promise evaluated to. I want to say it might be called a promise handler. Um, I, but that's like, at that point, it's just semantics, by the way, there's a second argument on the uh, promise handler called a uh, reject, but we kind of don't need to use it anymore because they added a dot catch. So this is like, I'm actually kind of being selective about what I'm showing you, but there is a reject argument on there that we usually don't need to use because typically what we would do when we're doing our dot thens, if we're using promises, typically what you would do is you would do dot then, you would do dot then, 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 and then you could chain as many of those as you want. And if any of them break, it gets sent to the dot catch. Does that make, us, make sense? 
Mm -hmm. And then what you can do is like, I don't know, maybe let's try doing something with it. So for example, we have, let's go to our uh, Rick and Morty API real quick. Maybe what I want to do is well, I want to say, let's throw an error if a specific character is not alive, okay? So like, here's like maybe an idea of something that you could do. I want to throw an error if a character is, do they say dead, deceased? Oh, they don't have one that's not alive. Hang on a second, what happened here? Oh, I, I keep clicking on things on accident. Status, alive, 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 alive. Oh, okay, cool, there is a status of dead. I just needed to check the data. But let's try doing something like that and seeing if we can get it to work. So maybe here what I would do is I would say, okay, cool. From my data, I want to, and I don't need all this shit here. So for my data, I want to return data.results. And then you know what? I want to take those results and I want to, I want to, let's see, go over each of them. So data and I don't know, let's do one of two things. We're going to say data dot, um, not, we wouldn't call it data, sorry, we would call it characters. And we should be able to do something like characters dot for each character, do something, right? And in this case, whoops, in this case, that thing is going to be, I don't know, if character dot status equals alive and console dot log character dot name and then we could do like else we could do I don't know throw so remember this catch will only hit there's a big big thing that fucks they fucked me up for a while when I was like mod five but if you don't throw an error whenever you want the dot catch to be hit, then it's never going to hit that. So that's a big, big concept here. But I'm going to throw a new error, and this error um, is going to have, uh, let's see, it's just going to say uh, its message is going to be, let's actually do this. We'll say, so. Uh, whoops, I don't know why I did that. But feel free to ask that question. So, uh, you doesn't, isn't there going to be some sort of, is there no implicit uh, error handling where it like, it, it sends, like JavaScript senses that there's an error and you can hit that dot catch? You have to, you have to force it every single time? Yeah, so that's a great question. Let's get this thing to work real quick just because now I'm caught on it. But For sure. I'm going to answer that question very shortly. Um, great question. Cause that's something that threw me up, threw me off. Um, great question. Um, but here I'm going to say new error character name is dead, right? So let's see if it works. So now when this thing loads, it probably should show an alert for the first dead character. Hey, Bradolf Linkler is dead. No. Okay, cool. Sorry. I just wanted to finish up that thought, but no, that's a fantastic question. So let's it also looks it. like it only hits that first one yeah so here's what we're gonna do uh yeah i think that that's just because um maybe when you do an alert it breaks out of stuff i don't know here we could do oh uh, yeah i actually think it probably stops this code when you throw the error which makes sense to that me that makes sense yeah console.log error message right let's see i don't think it's gonna work with a console log Yep, see it only shows Abradolf Linkler is dead. You're done, <laughs> whatever. But you get the idea. So now what I wanna do is I wanna show you what happens if there's an error that comes from a server. Let's just go ahead and fetch something that doesn't exist. 
So what I'm going to do is let's just do a fetch call. Fetch to localhost. Uh, let's do HTTP colon slash slash localhost uh, 4000. And then we'll do a dot then response goes to response.json dot then uh, console.log. Right? Let's just do this and see what happens implicitly. Cool. So we did get an error. Let's see if the dot catch picks it up. Dot catch. So we're going to say error console.log. What the fuck up? Nice. So cool. So now it's telling me failed to fetch. So it did hit that. But a lot of times, the errors that you get will not actually throw an error. Sometimes it might return a status code. So let me, I'm trying to think of a good example. Let's say we have here, I'm going to install a JSON server like y'all had on your, um, I'm just going to do NPM. I don't even need to do that. I could just add a db.json. And I'm fairly certain I don't even need to put anything in here in order for it to work. Maybe like an empty thing. And then I should be able to do JSON server uh, watch db.json. Cool. Now that's working. I just don't want to create a whole back end. But cool. And then here I'm just going to run light server. And this is going to fetch to localhost 3000. So, because let's see the different kinds of things they get returned. Um, bam. Is that an error? That's not an error, right? Mm -hmm. What you can do that's kind of cool is you could pull the status off of it. So, watch this. Ready? Why don't we take this response and just console.log the response without parsing it to JSON? So I want to do console.log response for now. And I don't know if we'll get exactly what we need here, but I think we will. So first of all, we get this complicated object, right? This response is like the thing that's sent over. And you notice how I can see a status in here and it says, okay, it gives me a URL. Oh, it sucks that this is giving me a status of okay. I think that this should be like, in reality, what you would do is you would create your backend to where if you tried to access an endpoint that wasn't there, the status would not be 200. 200 is a good status. This just isn't working because we haven't created a custom backend. This is one of the many reasons on why you want a custom backend. And if you follow along with those auth videos, you'll notice that you can change the status that you actually send to the user depending on what they uh, give you. So for example, if there's like, if you're unauthorized in Rails, um, there's a status code for that. Unauthorized, uh, whoops, 401, that's that status code. And in general, if you have a properly set up backend, then when this response gets sent back, it comes with a status, right? So because it comes with a status, you could take this status and a lot of times what you'll see is you'll see something like this. Um, you'll see something along these lines. Uh, I need to do, need to expand this out, right? You would say like, if response dot status is greater than 200. In other words, anything under 200 is good. But if it's anything greater than 200, you fucked up. And that would be a status sent by your back end. Now your back end can't throw an error on your front end, right? You can, I can't be a back end and just be like, oh, throw an error to the front end. You can't really do that. What you can do is you can say, oh, 
I'm going to send a status code back. I'm going to return with a status code. And then based off of that status code, they can throw an error. It's, I kind of wish it really what I would, I would probably should have done was created a rails backend to show this, but in rails here, watch this. If you go to rails, So, yeah, so in Rails, when you use this render function, you have basically, what you have is you have kind of like, when, I don't know, kind of like when you use a post method in JavaScript, how you have options. Render has options, and this options is actually a hash right here. It, it doesn't look like it because fucking Rails is, and Ruby is annoying, but this is actually a hash right there. And what you can do is you can set a status of service unavailable. So let's, we can look up uh, status codes in Ruby. This is actually a super good little rabbit hole to go down. But when you do like uh, service unavailable, it actually codes for something. So uh, let's see. Service unavailable is a 503. I don't know these by heart or anything like that. What's 418? Does that show up there? Nope. They removed it. I'm so sad. Yeah. Why? What was it? It's the teapot code. I'm a teapot. Really? Yeah. I have no idea what that is. They put it in. It was, yeah, there you go. <laughs> That's fucking genius that that existed. RIP, right. RIP. This hat goes off to teapot code. Uh -huh. Yeah, but the, but this is this starting to kind of maybe these, some of these pieces are starting to come together. Yeah. Cool. I, I have a question. Sure. Can you throw things other than errors to your catch? Like, is, is yeah. I don't actually. I don't even know. I, like you're asking me something that I really genuinely don't know. Oh, uh, yeah, actually, that we, uh, um, we, I feel like, never mind, keep going. I'll, I'll get my train of thought back in a second. Throws a user defined exception. Let's try it. So, like in, in, in Python, right, whenever you do it, it it's, it's try and accept. Um, which does the same thing and accept is kind of a catch all, but it works like shit. So the only way that you can, or what you have to do is you have to do a accept and then name a particular exception. And if it doesn't hit that specific exception, it'll still break. So like the, uh, what I'm wondering is like, based on the status code thing, like, right. Uh, what's a way that we might like, what's an error that we might not, I guess this is what you're explaining. Uh, I, I'm just a little bit confused on how to get to the catch. Yeah, well, I typically throw an error. I think this might work if we don't. Let's test it. Let's just throw text. Throw. My hunch is, is that error.message will not be defined. Yep, error.message is not defined. So in order to use... I think in order to use this dot catch, maybe it wants the format of an error, but let's see what happens if I just do this. Ah, there we go. So an error, it looks like, cause I'm, I'm actually curious also what happens if I just like out in the open, just type in throw, hello. I think what throw might be saying is, yup, create an error. So I think throw just in general creates um, an error. And then what I, and this is me just like kind of guessing. I, I don't know because I don't, I've never used throw without error really. But if you throw something, I think by default, it creates an error. So then if this is an error and you console.log that error, it's just logging the message. But then 
the way that I usually see it is throw new error like this. And I think that the reason why this won't work now is because now let's get rid of this guy, right? Now I think it's going to console.log an error still. So that whole error still carries through. Maybe not. Now it's now I guess here's what it looks like. Oh. And this this could Oh be, shit. This so, is what I'm thinking. Let's do this. Console.log. We're just gonna do new error and we're gonna add in hello. And it looks like maybe all that does is create a string that represents an error. Yeah, it looks like nope. that that new error is making an error object out of your uh oh yo 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 do type of uh do type of for like and see if it's something specific. Good call. Type of new object. Can you do okay 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 um check the uh check check the prototype on it. Like is there um how do you check the prototype of something? It's that and then dot prototype. So you can run the same line. Dot dot prototype. Is prototype of maybe? Oops. I think what you would do is I yeah, I don't I don't know how to do that. But you could feel free to play around with that. It Okay. Do you, what do you want me to Fair check? Enough. If you tell me exactly what uh, no, 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 no. I, I got what I needed out of that. It, it's cool. a it's a function that returns a boolean. Yep. Okay. Yeah, right. Like new. So it seems like what you would want to do is something like this. New error. And then dot is prototype of what? What would it be? Is prototype of? Oh, okay. What does that mean? Is prototype of? Is there an argument that goes in here? Um, so let's I'm not good at like deep JavaScript. So like, that's, that's what we've gotten incredibly good at in the past three weeks is just real deep JavaScript. <laughs> uh, so, okay. Is prototype of method checks for if an object exists in another object's prototype. So, uh, Sorry, I, yeah, I feel like it would be the only thing that I would know to write here is also new error. <laughs> So I don't know. Is it a prototype of object? Would probably be maybe true. Nope. I don't. I don't. I don't know, man. All no, I know cool, man. is that when I typically write this code, I would throw a new error, and then in the catch, I would usually console dot log the message of that error because the thing that you instantiate in here is the message that you can pull out later here. So that's a cool rabbit hole to go down. I just don't want to take away from everyone with that. And I definitely don't know what I'm doing. So it would literally be the equivalent of both of us Googling together, which we should probably do at some point, just not right now. <laughs> Does anyone have more questions? Do y'all want to try using an async await call on like some Rick and Morty characters? Uh, one more question is, is, um, so will a single catch destroy an entire promise chain or, uh, just up to that catch and then it'll continue through from there. You typically put one catch on a promise chain and, but it will catch anything from any of those. Okay. So what I'm, what I'm saying is if you do a, uh, okay. So like, for instance, like we're working with, remember we were talking about selenium yesterday or yep. the day before. Sure. Um, so what you'll want, like what you do with that is basically each place that you go, you want to have a try catch or try accept. So what I'm wondering is if you, what I, the way that I would think to write, um, then catch would be, then catch, then catch, then catch, then no, catch. This is this is simpler than that because you could just do one then and then the catch works on any of them. Sure, right. But if you're trying 
do what, what I'm saying is if you're trying to find the exact place where it's breaking, right? And you, so for instance, let's say you've got four dot bins and a single dot catch, right? It'll catch if there's a break, right? But let's say you want to know specifically where it's breaking. If you did a then catch, then catch, then catch, and it doesn't catch until the third one, you know there's problem with the third then. I'm not sense? sure that you can have more than one dot catch in a promise chain like that. But also I don't think okay. you need to because this error contains the contents that like tell you maybe where it would be in that dot bin. Does that make sense? Like, if you really were worried about which one and you wanted to check to see if it was in a specific one, you could do a try catch uh, in, well, you wouldn't even need a try catch. You could just, because here's the thing, if an error is thrown, it's gonna be thrown where it's thrown. So for example, if you have five dot thens, the error that gets thrown, like let's say you run into some sort of JavaScript error on one of those dot thens, the error is going to come through in your dot catch if you log what that message is. I okay. guess I'm trying to think a little bit more about that. Yeah, I got. I, I, I can think of a scenario uh, okay. uh, using the Rick and Morty API, right? Okay. So let's say we call the original. Uh, do the characters have their own individual URLs? Yes. They do? OK, perfect. So let's say we're going to do a call uh, to the um, to the top level API, right? Just API slash characters, OK? And we want to try to, we want to, uh, 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 we're going to do a dot then to pull that back, right? Then we throw a catch after it to see if anything goes wrong while we're doing that, OK? Part of the response, part of our promise chain moving forward from there is we're trying to get each individual character's information so that the total return value of our fetch is each character's info, right? Like an array of all the characters. Okay. But maybe we want to check to see if there's a problem with that first call. And then if we're able to get all of the characters initially, and then we're checking their individual URLs, we put a second catch in there. So it would be then catch, then search each character individually, catch if you run into any problems with the characters. Uh, let me think about that for a second. That was a lot, but let's say I'm taking, let, let's just go over the, the way that we're familiar with. So we'll say data goes to data.results. And then now I have characters. And what you're saying is inside of here, I would take these characters and I would do some kind of for each. Correct. So maybe characters and then dot for each. Uh, Oops. Oh, fuck you. For each, uh, and I guess we could do character do something. Let me say that. Um, what you would do is maybe do another fetch call, which, by the way, is not a good way of doing that. There's a better way of doing that in JavaScript, which actually might answer your question kind of anyways. But um, so what you're saying is in here, oh my. Did my keyboard freeze? I thought my keyboard froze, but no, it did not. So then what you can do is you would say, make a fetch call to, and let's actually go to this API real quick. Ah, oh, fuck. Um, let's go here. Open it up. So we want to go to character dot, uh, image. We'll just do image for now. Right, and you're saying I want to fetch at character dot image, and what you're saying is, where would that? This is what I don't understand because here, if you did a dot catch, right, you could do a dot then, if you wanted to do it this way, which is not really a great way of doing it. Uh, first, let's go to one of those images. I guess what you could say is. The thing is, an image wouldn't really be a good one, I don't think, because you're not getting JSON from an image. So let's maybe go to, we can go to slash ID is what we'll do. We'll go, instead of doing this, we'll go, we'll do this. I think this might clear up what you're saying. This is probably exactly what you wanted, I'm thinking. 
as far as like what I, I, I'm saying we would put a catch right here in case there was a problem with this. Right. So hang on. What do you mean by right here? Right after this then. So right here in case there's an issue with this. And if there's an issue here, we catch it. Otherwise, continue. That's exactly what's happening though. If we put our catch here, it's gonna catch if there's an issue here. Okay, but I'm, I'm talking about like specifically identifying the origin of the error, right? Like this is a, uh, 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 it's, it's, it will catch it there, right? But the question is like, did the error occur from data dot something with this or did the error occur right here? Well, if you really wanted to do that, you, you could do a try catch inside of here. Like, I know that in general, you only want to put like one dot catch, I'm pretty sure, on a on a chain. I don't think- Okay, you, so just like by by dot, convention. The dot, well, it's, it's not convention. It's like dot catch is meant to catch it for any of these. And by the way, I think, I'm not 100% sure, but I think a dot catch can be up here and it would still catch stuff from below, right? So like when you think of like a try catch, JavaScript, JavaScript still has try catch. Um, that still exists in JavaScript, but try catch is not asynchronous. So try, try I believe, right? Think try catch is non asynchronous. It's like a, a rescue. It's not asynchronous, I don't believe. But what it does is if something in here fucks up, then it goes to the catch. So if you really wanted to, you could chain them like that. But I don't think that the use case comes up very often. Because so like, for example, here, if I want to figure, like, there's really only one spot that the problem would be, the fucking response, unless the API completely changed, right? I'm pretty sure that the error would be in the response. And it wouldn't be that difficult to figure out what's going on because guess what? This catch displays the error message. So if something breaks in here, it's gonna be a different error message than if something breaks in here, right? Like it, it wouldn't be the same error message that gets spit through. You might handle that error message the same, but it wouldn't be the same error message. Sure, and the error messages, are they're pretty, um, not elaborate, but uh, descriptive. Yeah, I mean, those error messages are the exact errors, error messages that you've been seeing in JavaScript, right? But certainly that, like, if I am trying to pull out results, it's, what is it going to say? If results isn't there, it's going to say, oh, okay, results does not exist on undefined. Okay, that tells me what line of code <laughs> that's in, right? Or here, this is going to be some kind of status code thing or something like that. Uh, or... Like usually each of these dot dens, you're doing a different thing. So you would result with a different error. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. I see what I, you're saying, but I think that dot catch was actually designed to simplify that to where you don't have to rewrite a bunch of code. I think that's kind of like the purpose of why dot catch was created. Okay. As opposed okay. to like a try catch loop or there's other ways of doing, like you can do more complicated one of the things that I did not get into with promises that you could talk about is technically each of these dot dens, this is probably what I should have answered right off the bat. Let's do this. Um, this is definitely something I should have answered way before. So let's go ahead and a dot then technically always has a rejected argument. This rejected argument is a callback function that runs when something gets rejected. I think this will answer your question. So I'm trying to remember how to use it, but uh, I need to remember my syntax, but I gotta think for a second. Um, whatever you return here, Hang on, I'm trying to remember this. I have to go, there's a really good resource I'm gonna show you before the end of this. But what I wanna do is look up dot then uh, JavaScript. Whoops, I, uh, I hope that works. 
but there is a way to access, let's see. There should be something in here about a promise, resolve, reject. So cool. Because I think on fulfilled, on rejected, exactly. So fulfillment, I just want to look at the syntax. Cool. So right now, okay, I, I was definitely doing this wrong. So right now, everything inside from here to here is one function. And this function is the value that you get if this promise is resolved. This is, a, this is cool. The second argument to a dot then can be the argument if rejected. So in here, I could take an error and let's just console.log error, okay? This is trippy, okay? It is very trippy. Or if I wanted to, I could just write console log there or whatever. Here's what I'm gonna do. Right now, I am going to throw an error, throw new error, and we just wanna see if we can get this thing to console log. And we're, we're gonna do error, error.message just to show that we actually hit this thing and it's not just an error. Uh, what the fuck, mate? Cool, give that a save. And when I go here, oh, no, it didn't do what I wanted. Throw new error, and then it should run this thing. Hmm. I don't, well, no, because it's, it's gonna successfully execute the fact that you're trying to throw an error, right? Right, but then I think what it does, oh wait, yeah, no, that, you're right. This would have to exist in here. Yo, do it, do it right there. Do it right there and then uh, uh, change the API uh, endpoint. Try doing that. Like, so try doing like a comma and then like a, uh, an yeah, error message. Just gonna fake, we're gonna fake a bad, okay, yeah, for sure, we could do that. Yep. And, oh, I think that this thing has a built-in, we don't want to do that. We don't want to do it that way. Let's put it in, because I could do that. I could do that. Actually, if I am going to do that, you could do it here. Do it right there. Yeah. Yeah. So what you could do is, I apologize if this is hard to follow along with, but, um, so I can make a second argument and we're just going to make it console dot law. Uh, no. We're gonna do it console.error. I think that reads the message on the error. So I think that should do the trick. Like right now this should do nothing. This should work perfectly fine. And then if I add an R. Rick and Marty. Yup. Nah, it's not. Hmm. I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try expanding this out. No, 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 that, that was it. That was it. No, that it wasn't did. it. It's a type error, fail to fetch. Right, but it would say that even if I didn't do anything here. Oh, gotcha. Like, look at that. Type error, failed to fetch. What we would want. It did say uncaught. It did say uncaught in promise whenever you don't have it there. That, that is one difference. Oh, really? Yeah. I think, I think maybe instead of console.error, we'll just go. Uh, just do console. Just do console dot log. Goes to console dot log error dot message. Yeah, console dot log probably would have worked too. Okay, well it it did it, but it also ran an error here. Because if I didn't have this, I, I don't know that I can explain the exact reason why, but no, that I'm, makes sense. That makes sense. It's still outputting. It's outputting that it failed the first part. It's right. giving you some sort of a return message because it failed the first part. But then yeah. given that you also said on reject, do this. It's like if you had a console.log exactly. and a function that fails, it's still going to log it before it fails. Right. Does that, does that help? Yes. Okay, cool. I, I know that maybe like, I didn't know exactly what you were asking at first. I was kind of confused. And plus, 
I didn't know the answer at first. I had to like think about it. So yeah, sorry, bad. sorry to put you through the ringer, man. <laughs> no, I, I enjoyed that rabbit hole a little bit. That was fun. So but from also from what I've te okay, I'm gonna show you that resource now. The resource is there's a there's a um, command line app you can use called um, oh, fuck yes, that's awesome. Uh, sorry, I just got good news. Um, if you go to nodeschool.io, they have these like little command line apps that you can teach yourself with. They have one called Promise It Won't Hurt. And you can NPM install it. There is some weird bug in there that you got to fix. But then you can run Promise It Won't Hurt, I think, like that. And then now it gives you these lessons on how to learn promises. So they give you this warm up, and they say, cool, here's what you have to do. Um, here's some ECMAScript 15 stuff. Compare the following code written in the more traditional idiom of asynchronous callbacks. They give you like a comparison of what async callbacks were compared to promises. This might be a really cool rabbit hole for you to go down if you want to. I spent about a, like three hours on it or something like that. It was great. I actually want to learn more this, from this like node school thing because I thought that shit was pretty awesome. Um, uh, Kyle did, I, that's going to be dope. I am going to look into that. But uh, I do remember Kyle did his, when he, he did his first advanced JavaScript in our mod two. Uh, he showed us all the different async, uh, uh, like, well, the different types of promises. I think there's three different types. And he did default to saying that the dot then seems to be the, the, the best way to move forward. Um, There's also a lot of people that seems to be FYI, a little bit of a nerd wars. Some people really like async await. There are people gotcha. that are, that are like, if you watch a bunch of like fucking a lot of these like fucking like web developer influencer type people, they'll be like async await way better than dot then like, Mm, yes, you look way cooler if you do an async await. If you if you're curious, we can work an async await example. Anything to where I don't have to do any more fucking code challenge reviews today. I've done Definitely. so many today. Let's I'm do it. Hurts from that. I'm gonna go to the bathroom, but let's do it. Cool. Let's yeah, do I'd it. also love to see an async await example. Yeah, I thought that'd be a lot more fun than watching me not know what I'm talking about about promises for a while. So. Um, no, honestly, John, I think it's really helpful to watch you like work stuff out because you're like, you know, like, you're like maybe like a little step closer to us than the instructors, even though you still have like infinitely, infinitely more knowledge than we do. But it, so it's really helpful to watch you problem solve because it's a little more relatable. Do not use the word infinitely more knowledge. How dare you? That's not true. Y'all are smart as fuck. <laughs> oh, man practice like I, there we go we'll say more practice i also don't do a good job of like not going down rabbit holes which may be a good thing sometimes because i'm what i don't do is like hey let's stay focused on the lesson i like it's probably pretty clear that i have add when i give a lesson but maybe that works for some people so no i like it i like the rabbit holes that's how i learn as i'm like oh what is this like weird thing that i just like found out let me go learn mm -hmm. more about it and then I come back. So I, I, I like that. I think it's helpful. Yeah. So let's take a look at async. And uh, well, I'll just wait for Jack to come back. How much tea did that dude drink? It's taking forever. <laughs> How's your week going otherwise, John? Not bad. I took a code challenge today for a job that I'm applying for. And yeah. uh got a fucking crush that shit so that was good my roommate applied for the same job and got like uh like a 40 percent on the code challenge and i got 100 on it so i was like yeah buddy Rock on. yeah what was the challenge um there were a few algorithms i could show y'all exactly what they were afterwards um if you want but okay don't tell anyone <laughs> we don't have any more classes today oh cool yeah i'd be happy to show you what they were um i'll even show you <laughs> my tdd solutions to them and how i arrive to them uh we're at we're at four let me i gotta make sure i don't have anything super important uh like let me look at this code challenge list and make sure it's not huge oh yeah we're doing fine yeah let's go down some rabbit holes together family <laughs> all right so first let's do this a this uh async await thing so 
if we want to do the async version of uh, fetching to Rick and Morty, the concept is you create an asynchronous function. So maybe what I'll do is I'll create an async function and we'll call it fetch characters, right? Cool, that's step one. Inside of an async function, you can use this thing called await. Await makes it run almost exactly like, do you remember how in Ruby, when you would do a rest client call, you would say like, oh, rest client, like this variable equals rest client dot get. And you don't have to worry about like this promise object. It just eventually equals that, but it kind of stops and doesn't run that next line of code until it comes back. Does that make sense? Same thing yes. here. So what you would do is you would say response, or I guess you do const response equals, oh shit, await for the, uh, uh, fetch, and then let's go see if I, let's see if I mess this up. There's a solid chance. I never use a wait, um, but I need this practice anyways. And then what you would say is const parsed response equals await. So you await for this thing to come back and then you should be able to, I can't remember if you use JSON parse or if you use dot JSON. I want to say you use dot J, I want to say you use JSON parse because JSON dot parse works on just text, but uh, dot JSON only works on a promise. So we'll see if this works. Sponce, and then all we want to do is console dot log parsed response. And then the thought process here is that, first of all, everything in here does like behave just like Ruby. So here, this will freeze until that fetch is finished. This will freeze until this thing is finished. Is it, so, is it that, is it that using it all together like that going to just do that anyway, because of the way that the it's being run? Um, I don't know. Let's take a look. Let's play around with it. I'm not the best at this. So it doesn't like, hmm, maybe it is supposed to be response dot JSON. Let's try that out. Cool. That worked. Um, yeah. So I guess it likes the dot JSON. Um, I want to think about why though. So, oh, I know why. What does a fetch evaluate to after it comes back? What is the what is the return value from a fetch? A what response. data type? What? Oh, uh, it's a it's a, uh, a JSON object. Nope, it's not a JSON object. You can pull a JSON object out of it, but the return from a fetch is a very specific thing. We just talked about them a whole shit ton. A promise. A promise. The thing that a fetch returns is always a promise. So what I tried doing was I tried parsing. I tried doing json.parse on a promise, but you can't parse a promise. You can use the .json method to pull JSON out of a promise, but you can't just parse a promise like it's a string. Does that make sense? Yeah. Cool. So what I did was I said, oh, okay. Well, since this thing returns a promise on this promise, I want you to pull out the JSON. And actually pulling out the JSON itself is an asynchronous task. So you have to await on that as well. And then after that, you can treat it just like a variable. So you don't have to worry about like dumping it into an, a function on the inside, right? So in other words, I could say, you know, I could do anything with this response. I could treat it like a variable after that point. Does that make sense? Cool. And sometimes this makes for elegant code. It, 
Kyle actually said when I was writing tests, um, Kyle, I, I was doing one and Kyle was able to look at it and be like, that's actually a good use case for an await. And I'm like, oh, fuck. Well, I'm fucking say so. No, I'm just kidding. But it, it was, it was, uh, there's some times where a weight looks nicer, but you're just like, you're right. It is. Yeah. I, there's definitely a lot of times where Kyle like will know best practices and he'll explain the best practice. And I still don't understand why it's the best practice. <laughs> I'll be like, Oh, that's the best practice. And you just explain why, but I cannot re-explain why <laughs> I do not get it. <laughs> that's very common. So yeah. All right. I'm going to stop this recording now.